perfect posture, what does it look like? If you guys wanted to see what perfect posture was, if you, any of you guys have kids around the age of five or six, check out how they sit and how they stand. That is the ideal posture, unless they have some major like, you know, scoliosis or deformity. Um, when you're at the age of five or six is when your posture is at is best. Um, so as we kind of old, and as we kind of live life and experience all of the forces that kind of come onto us, um, our bodies adapt and change. And that's kind of where we start to kind of develop this awful posture. So what I want you to notice is in the first picture, the child, his head is perfectly over his shoulders in line. As we get older, our head starts to migrate forward. And that's just, again, a response to all the forces that we put on it. As we grow older, it continues to progress. You become more forward, forward, forward. Also, you lose your hair. So that's another you know, thing that's kind of a problem with getting older. But again, you notice you kind of have that increased forward head. You kind of get that you know, hump back, the thoracic kyphosis, tightening of the pecs. And again, it's all just um, a response to kind of all the, the forces and the uh, stress that we put on it uh, with our daily life. All right, so why do we slouch? Uh, first thing is we're very forward people. Uh, everything that we do in our lives is in front of us, whether it's at work, we're sitting, we're working on the computer, we're you know, uh, typing, we're writing, we're reaching, we're doing all this stuff, we're doing housework, laundry, yard work. Everything is in front of us. Unless you're Michelangelo painting Sistine Chapel, chances are you're not standing like this all day long. So um, that's you know, kind of a big deal because how many hours a day do you spend at work? A lot. So that's eight hours a day of you training your body to do some, like training bad habits. Uh, the second thing is our brains have muscle and uh, muscle memory and position memory. So if you spend eight hours a day like this, our brain naturally interprets that as normal. So when you go to try and sit up straight, it's going to feel abnormal. And when I have you do it, you guys, you're going to be like, oh, Christina, this is not, this does not feel normal. Okay, it isn't. We need to reach, change what your normal is. Okay. All right, and also, uh, as a whole, we're quite a bit more sedentary than we're supposed to be. We're not built to sit. We're built to move. You know, you think cavemen, like, hunting, like, you know, killing animals and moving and running, and we don't do that. We sit. I mean, I move a lot because I'm a physical therapist, and I'm up and all over the place. But as a whole, we, you know, we sit at chairs, or just sedentary as a whole with not exercising as much as we should. So um, we need to move. We're not built to be static. We're built to move. Why is good posture so important? Well, it's something that you can control. Uh, there are a lot of things in life that we have, do not have control over, uh, especially injuries, like getting into a car accident or you know, blowing your ACL while playing soccer or spraining your ankle or whatever. This is something that you absolutely control. And if, you know, if you're not injured right now and you don't have pain right now, uh, it's much easier to stay ahead of it. So this is something that I really want you guys to pay attention to and it, because it's one of the most common things I see in my clinic. Um, consequences of a postural strain can be severe. So it can be just pain, like when people have tightness in their neck. Like most people probably would like to have a neck massage. I will not give you one, but you would like to have one because, you know, everyone's postures as a whole, even dancers who are supposed to have fabulous posture, uh, are less than ideal. And our bodies kind of let us know about that. Uh, you can get structural changes. Think of grandma's humpback, okay? If she would have stood up straight, she probably wouldn't have that. Uh, don't tell her that. Please don't tell her I told you that. So, second thing is neurologic complications, like nerve entrapment. You can get numbness, tingling, weakness. Our cervical spine is kind of a hot area. There's a lot going on there, um, you know, blood vessels, nerves, muscles, bones. There's, there's a lot going on in a very, very small space. So if you change the mechanics, and for the worse, you kind of pinch up on everything, and it can cause quite a bit of problem. You can also herniate a disc, which is not fun. If you know anyone who's had a disc herniation, not fun at all. So pain. Why do we get pain? You get pain um, because of normal stresses on abnormal tissues, like when you break a bone, okay? Walking around normally is not a big deal, but if you have a, a shattered tibia, it kind of hurts. Abnormal stresses on normal tissues. That's the postural strain, which is a majority of the things that I see in the clinic. And then abnormal stresses on abnormal tissues. And that would be the example of the woman that I met through Boise Cascade who had bone spurs and arthritis um, and poor posture, which then gave her radicular or nerve problems. Posture training is one of the easiest things that you can do to prevent an injury, but it's also the hardest. It's easy because it is literally as straightforward as I say it is, and I'm not joking. It really is that easy, but it's really hard because you have to change a habit. Your body interprets this as being normal, okay? You know, your muscles are tight, your muscles are weak. It, this is normal for you. So you have to basically retrain your body of what normal is supposed to be, and that's basically a giant pain in the butt because you have to think about it a lot. It's not hard. You just have to think about it. Um, our spine 
has cervical vertebra, thoracic vertebra, lumbar vertebra. It's just our spinal column. We have natural curves in our spine. It's built that way to actually serve uh, to be loaded. We're meant to be loaded. We're meant to move. We're meant to jump. There's discs to, you know, to kind of cushion it. We're meant to move. When you alter the mechanics based on your posture, everything becomes a hot mess. Muscles don't work the way they're supposed to work. Nerves don't have the room that they're supposed to have, and that's when you get problems. Um, so every 15 minutes, I want you to be mindful of it. Set a timer on your watch, put a post-it note up, do whatever you have to do. Um, so here we go from the bottom up, things you need to think through, think about, okay? First thing is make sure you have weight through your feet, equal weight through your feet. So guys who are cross-legged right now, uncross. Fabulous, okay? And I want you to bear weight through your feet. So typically when you have a good chair, you know, you want to try and scoot back so you can use the lumbar curve. But not everybody has long enough legs to be able to do that. So then you end up dangling and then basically end up relying on loading everything through your back. We want to be able to put weight through your feet so you kind of function more like a tripod rather than having to bear all your weight through your sacrum, which then makes you have to sit like this. Whereas when, you're, when you shift your weight forward, and everyone try it, just kind of shift your weight a little bit forward so you can kind of feel some weight through your feet it's easier to stand upright or sit upright rather than when you sit all the way back. You have to really work hard to get yourself up, whereas just shifting your weight forward, boom. I mean, you have a really solid foundation, okay? I want to try and make this as thoughtless as possible. <laughs> so doing this makes you not have to think about it. The second thing is you want to make sure that your lumbar spine is supported. So if you have a good chair, and these are less than ideal, they don't have a, a dramatic lordotic support, um, you can just roll up a towel and put it right there. I like to have people put it right at kind of like the top of your sacrum, uh, right above um, that little line that's back there. I don't know if I can say it on the video, but yes, right above your butt. <laughs> um, and, but that's where it's appropriate place to get supported. Um, and what you notice is when you do have that, it actually just kind of props you forward and you don't have to think quite so hard. The third thing is to get your chest out. This is really hard for women because they don't want to stick out their chest. Um, or men because they don't want to feel like they're being, um, they don't want to look overly confident. But uh, do it because what you'll notice is if you just stick your chest out, automatically your shoulders back, go back and your head kind of goes over your shoulders. So just by doing this, I mean, it probably feels weird. So everyone try this together, group effort. Okay, I can see you all. Good. All right, feels weird, right? Okay, you're not used to it you need to become used to this, okay? Like I said, this is the most common thing I see in the clinic and it's very frustrating because it's so preventable. So keep this in mind, this will make a big difference, okay? Last thing is a, ch a chin tuck, and I'll have uh, pictures of this. Uh, it's basically just pulling your head over your shoulders, okay? And that's it. So normally you end up looking like a turtle with its head poking out, okay? You need to get it over the shoulders. And there's a terribly attractive picture coming up of me doing that, so, all right. So here is some workspace ergonomics tips. These are just super, super simple, straightforward. Uh, first thing first, uh, having an adjustable chair is really great because you can lower it or high, uh, raise it up depending on how tall you are. Again, remember your feet should be on the floor. If your chair is not adjustable or your desk is so high that you can't lower it down enough, all you have to do is put like a, a phone book, a block, a waste basket, anything on the floor and prop your feet on it. Putting a little bit of weight through your feet makes a huge difference, okay? So no matter what your setup is at your workspace, you can modify it or I'll find a way to modify it, okay? Uh, your desk height, you want to make sure it's at the appropriate height where you can maintain that fabulous new positioning, that new posture that you guys have that you're so proud of that you're going to tell everybody about, right? Right, okay? So you want to have your desk in the appropriate height so that you can keep your elbows at your side and your shoulders back. The keyboard, we'd like to have a, a slide out keyboard just because then you don't have to be holding up in this position, okay? When you're typing like this, this giant meaty muscle is constantly active and that's why it's, it, and it's pretty much overworked. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of like the awkward kid on the basketball team, likes to help out but causes more harm than good. That's exactly what your upper trap does. Then it gets overworked and then it gets really, really tight and you have a hard time loosening it up, which causes quite a bit of pain. So keyboard down, okay? Uh, last thing is your computer. Uh, make sure your monitor is in front of you. That's just really, really easy. <laughs> None of this, okay? This right here will cause muscle tight tightness and it will cause issues. You can get nerve entrapment, everything. The last thing on here that I didn't put on here that I wanted to just mention, um, telephones, okay? This is awful, okay? Get a headset. Uh, or find a way to hold it up with your arm, but absolutely, and you guys watch out for each other. If you see someone, you have the, the right to actually poke them in their side and say, what would Christina do? Okay, WWKD.
Okay. Um, this first stretch is the ear to shoulder stretch. It's the stretch you probably see people doing when they have neck tightness. Um, it stretches your upper trapezius muscle, which is basically that big meaty muscle. And all you do is just take your ear to your shoulder. The picture shows me grabbing underneath the chair, which basically just stabilizes my shoulder. So I want everyone to try it so you can feel the ooh ah. Come on. Okay. And this chair is kind of funny, so maybe just sit on your hand. Okay. Lean over and stretch. You can give yourself a little bit of overpressure. You should be feeling it on the opposite side, right on the lateral aspect of your neck. Okay? Feels amazing? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Okay? When I have people stretch, I have them typically hold it for 45 seconds. Uh, most people don't stretch long enough when they do it. And again, they say, Christina, this is forever. I don't have time to hold it for 45 seconds. Get over it and just do it. Okay? 45 seconds is what's needed to actually get tissue changes, so you have to hold it for that long. Otherwise, you can elicit a quick stretch, which causes the muscles to tighten up even more, and that's bad news bears. Okay, second one is to stretch your levator scapula. It's the muscle that's on the top aspect of your scapula. And what you do is you rotate your head, bunk, 45 degrees, see the picture? And then basically look like you're trying to smell your armpit, okay? <laughs> Good. You can give yourself a little bit of overpressure, and you should feel it more posterior in nature, so more towards the back. Um, all right, the next one is to stretch out our pecs, okay? And I typically just use a doorway. Um, when we're sitting forward like this, working on our computers, again, our muscles adaptively shorten. We need to be able to give ourselves the mobility and the ability to sit up straight. If you don't stretch out your pecs, you can try and sit up, as sit up straight as much as you want, but you're basically fighting a losing battle because you're fighting against resistance. So you need to get this mobility. If any of you guys do any weightlifting, like, you know, like bench press or, you know, flies or whatever, or even just with working, um, chances are you have really, really tight pecs, so this needs to get moving. This is the awesome exercise. This is my favorite exercise, and the reason why it's important is because it, A, stretches, uh, retrains your muscles, and, well, that's pretty much it, and it gives your cervical spine, <laughs> gives your cervical spine more room. So what you do is you basically give yourself a double chin. It is amazing. What you do is you just kind of go back like that, okay? What you should feel while you're doing it is actually a little bit of a stretch in the back of the neck. Also, you should um, kind of feel like you look like a goober. You do, okay? Double chin is where it's at, okay? You need this because it stretches your suboccipital muscles and it gaps open your cervical spine, giving those nerves, blood vessels, as much room as possible to move, okay? The consequences of lifting with poor technique can be, you know, there are like muscle strains, disc herniations. Also, if you aren't using the correct mechanics, you can't lift as much. You're not as efficient. You don't, um, you're not, you know, setting up your spine so that you can utilize those loading principles. And so you're much less efficient. You can't lift as much. You know, same thing with upper body stuff. If you don't have that postural control, that scapular stabilization, you can't lift as much. I can muscle test you and say, let's see how strong you are. Boom, 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 boom. You're weak. All right. Let's lock those shoulder blades in, retest you, and you're, you know, like twice as strong. And I'm not exaggerating. It's not voodoo. It's not magic. It just is what it is. As a general rule, you want to keep the object in your safe zone, just close to your body, okay? Not above, not below, not to the side, right here. So where you have that fabulous abdomen, that's where it's going to be. The reason why it's important to keep it there is because you're able to get in that good upper body posture, lock in those shoulders, use your biceps instead of having to use your back, and then just rely on those structures instead of having to rely on your low back to stabilize, okay? So close to body, elbows at side, shoulders down and back and relaxed. This is non-negotiable, okay? Um, use your legs when you go to lift, and I'll show you some pictures of some lifting technique. Um, and I'll show you pictures of bad lifting technique, but one of the worst things that I see is when I see people repetitively lifting, just kind of using their low back. I mean, it makes me cringe. Like, I go up to guys at the gym, which I'm sure they love, <laughs> and I'll be like, excuse me, hi, I'm a physical therapist. Yeah, you're doing that wrong. And they're like, ah, ah, ah. and then two seconds later, they're totally changing their technique. So, it's... Awesome. All right, get your butt down and back, and then brace your abdominals or wear a work belt, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through how to strengthen your abs here because it's, it's quite an involved process, but as a whole, just pulling in your abs and kind of giving, like, like if you were to prepare for someone chucking you in the stomach, that would be, that's adequate for right now at least, okay? Um, so this is called a golfer's lift where you basically just kind of bend forward and your back is straight and go down and lift it up. So if you don't know what that is and you need a Another example, just start watching some golf, and they all lift like that. But this is a picture of it. My back is straight, and I'm just kind of shifting forward. Make sense? This is a fabulous stretch. Um, this is my favorite stretch. It stretches out that low back, that overworked muscle, and you basically just find a doorway, and you just hang. Oh, it feels so great. Whenever I have a door, I have a patient that has low back pain, I always make them you know, do the stretch a couple of times, and I do it with them. All right, and then this is all my contact information.